What is going on, Charles Botenston here. So we are gonna be talking about closing costs. This is something that is rarely discussed. This is something that I discuss immediately up front, especially if someone is buying a condo new construction because you're looking at closing costs. You know, I had a, a buyer recently, he, he purchased a relatively expensive home, 3.5 million, and his closing costs, he was shocked at. And I told him up front, this is, this is what to expect. And he's like, well, I thought you were on the high side. And I was like, no, this is what you should expect. So we're not gonna go over, in other words, he was writing a six figure check just to buy an apartment that was worth $3.5 million. So a lot of people don't understand that. And the reason they don't understand that or want to actually understand it is because that's cash. That's not something you finance. Three, he was financing the $3.5 million. So he was financing that over 30 years. It wasn't a big deal. But if you're spending $150,000 or $200,000 in closing costs, that's cash. That's coming out of your bank account right now, not financing over time. So that's something, if you're a buyer's agent or your buyer, you need to be talking about. Each one is completely different. In other words, if you're a buyer as opposed to a seller. If you're in a co-op as a buyer in a condo. Two totally different products, townhouses are different, new construction is different. All right, so we're not gonna go over everything, but I'm gonna give you just some rough percentage estimates. If you're financing as opposed to cash, that also varies. So the biggest thing is two people that you should be talking to, actually three people, your bank. Okay, what is the rough amount of closing costs? The bank actually kind of underestimates a lot of it. Your attorney is going to be a little bit more spot on. The real estate agent is going to hopefully overestimate it. So you wanna take all three of those numbers. You know what it is, the best way to think about it is you need to gut renovate your apartment. So you bring in three estimates. One is that 50,000, the other one's at 75,000, the other one's at 100,000. So then you say, okay, 50, 100, $75,000, let's just average that out to $75,000, plus or minus $10,000. It's the exact same with closing costs. If someone comes in and they're 1% below, 1% above, someone's spot on, you obviously just average that out. You, you aggregate it, that's super easy. So. We'll just go into a couple of the, the actual names of the closing costs. If you want, go over to the website. If you're not viewing this on the website, go over to our website. We have a breakdown of the numbers and obviously a lot more on the actual names of everything. So the thing is, this isn't all at once, okay? You have closing closing costs up front. In other words, you're paying for the attorney, you're, you're paying for the, the loan application, the appraisal, say an inspection if it's a townhouse, and then you have just intermediary costs along the way, and then you have a large one at the end, which is usually taxes, and, and, and if you're paying for the transfer taxes for the new construction, then that's really large, especially, that, that's pretty much the majority of everything. When, when you're buying a large pro or an expensive product or you're going into a condo and new construction. So for a seller as opposed to a purchaser. So first of all, the broker is the biggest one, okay, as a seller. That's obviously where a lot of people, they want to skim. Uh, they want to get someone that's at 4%. But then the thing is that 4% broker or the 3% broker, whatever, the, their, their, whatever terms they, they think of, they don't know how to make it up in negotiations or they don't know how to negotiate, say, the closing date. So in other words, the amount of money that you're actually spending for a cheaper broker, you're not getting the highest price, you may not get the most qualified buyer, and you may not get multiple bids when multiple bids could be the norm, and you're holding onto a property longer because they don't know how to actually structure the deal, so instead of closing in three months, it's closed in six months. Well, I saved 3%, but in the long run, you're emotionally drained, you spent three extra months of monthlies. So that's the first thing, I'm not gonna get to the broker, but obviously talk about that. Your own attorney, okay? So on the listing side, typically, typically it's right, a good, good real estate attorney is about $3,000. It varies between 3,500, 3,000, 2,500. I wouldn't go much below that because once you get $2,000, this is the one area that I tell, the perfect, perfect story. So we had a, a, a deal on a, we actually had a contract out and then the money couldn't come into the United States. Actual rate, currency exchange rate, was too low, so they pulled out of the deal. They never signed the contract. Then we put out another contract on another buyer on the same property, and they the attorney never replied, never replied. They hired this attorney, he never replied to me, our attorney, the broker, or the client. So I called the, the broker and I said, dude, you gotta fire this guy. Get someone that is a professional, that knows what they're doing. Sure enough, they consulted with the client, the client hired someone else. I, I send an email introducing both attorneys, the buyer and the seller attorney. Within five minutes, they both say hi. They both introduce themselves. That is the difference. You cannot skimp on the attorney, okay? So just think about that. The processing, by the way, this is all for the seller. Processing fee, you have the, the transfer tax, so anything up to 500,000 is 1%, anything above, 
500,000 is 1.425%. 1. And then obviously commercial deals, same, same situation when you're buying, say, two adjacent residential units. I think it's two or three residential units in the same building. Uh, they, they consider that a commercial uh, transaction. Administration fees, so you have deed transfers, uh, residential, commercial deed tr transfers, those are inexpensive. Then you have the, the New York State transfer tax as opposed to New York City transfer tax. So that's $4 per 1,000. So I'm not gonna get into all the numbers, but this is the best way to look at it. If you're financing a deal and you're a seller, you're gonna be paying whatever percent for the broker, say 6%. You're paying 6% for the broker, and then you're probably gonna be charged another three to three and a half percent. On the buy side, if you're buying a co-op as opposed to a condo, let's talk about co-ops. Obviously there's mansion taxes, and, and, and if you're financing, not financing, things like that. But this is the best way to look at it. If you're a seller, you're, you're probably gonna be spending three to three and a half Upwards of 4% depends. And then on the buy side, you're probably gonna be spending on a co-op and you are buying uh, probably about 3.5% to 4.5%. If you're buying a condo, and this is buyers, if you're buying a condo, you're, you're probably looking at about you know upwards of 4.5 to start and you're financing. This is what I'm talking about when you're financing, 4.5% to 5%. You know, it, it's expensive. When you're buying a condo, it's very expensive, especially over a million dollars, and you're financing it, it's very expensive. You could drop about a percentage or maybe a percentage, uh, maybe one and a half percent off if you're cash. So I know that was very confusing, but the best way to look at this is, is the biggest ones is the mortgage recording tax, the transfer taxes, and the broker. Those are the three biggest, okay? So if you're on the seller, seller side, you pay for the transfer taxes in the broker. In a new construction, and it's a good market, the attorney fee and the New York City and New York State transfer taxes are getting pushed to the buyer. So when you're buying a new construction, you're spending a lot of money. You're paying for their attorney, their transfer taxes, and all of the condo fees going up on your side, which is the recording tax. You're paying for, obviously, the, all the financing charges. So the best way to, to, to navigate this is you gotta call your attorney, you gotta call the banker, and you gotta call the broker. Individually, ask them for a percentage of the purchase price. 3%, 4 5%, whatever the case is. Go on our website, we have a complete breakdown of everything between credit fee, appraisal fee, processing fee, application, bank fees, uh, you have a lien search, UCC1 filing, you have mansion tax, there's so many other, you have the recognition, or recognition agreement, maintenance adjustment, short-term interest, you have so many things that are, and it depends on the townhouse or a condo, you know, and a co-op, okay, and it's new construction. You know, those are four totally different closing costs. And the last thing I'll, I'll say with this is overestimate, okay, overestimate it. So when you go to the closing table, you say, wow, I, I did not expect this. I thought it would be more, as in a pleasant surprise. And then, even though I just said that was the last thing, this will be the last thing, is that when you're talking about closing costs, this, this has to factor into how long you're gonna actually own the property because your closing costs could be very high. And when it's very high, you have to buffer that into if you're gonna be doing any kind of renovation, if you're gonna be selling it within five years because there's gonna be a back end, so the front end closing cost, which is buying, is gonna be expensive. Then you have the back end closing costs. So during that home ownership period, I always recommend, and actually the average is 5.6 years that someone actually buys and then resells. So 5.6 years is the average. I recommend six years. That's when you actually make money. That's when, you, when it makes sense. It appreciates in value. You can write off, if you can, talk to your attorney, write off some of the taxes and, and interest on, on the loan and obviously the co-op interest on their loan. So highly recommend you study this. It's something a lot of people don't talk about and obviously the co-op looks, looks at when they look at post-closing liquidity and when it comes to negotiating in new developments, a lot of people don't think that they, or a lot of people think they have to pay for the transfer taxes. I had in 09, because it was a bad market, all of my buyers that bought into new construction, they didn't pay for it. The, the developer actually paid for it because no one was actually buying at that time. Nobody was actually financing at that time. So any questions, shoot me an email, charles at botanston.com. I hope this gives you a little bit of a breakdown within your, your mind to at least consider it and then get some percentage points on say you're buying a million dollars and I say that it's going to be about 3.5% of the purchase price, which is $35,000 in closing costs. I want to overestimate it so you're happy surprised rather than not surprised in a good way at the closing table. So have an amazing day. Shoot me an email, charles at botanston.com. Talk to you guys soon.